What's up, everybody? Happy spring, and welcome to this week's episode of the Just Saying Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Martindale, and this week have I got a cottage queen, (laughs) one of my dearest sisters. She is the host of the Not Cool Podcast. She's a hilarious comedian. I'm happy to have you back. This is your second time back. Uh, The wonderful, hilarious Sarah Highland. Welcome! Oh, Thank you, Justin Mina. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thanks for having me back. I know it's my second time. So it it's is. Going you're point, you're but... an elite group. <laughs> Have you really? Do no, people I really mean, not? Okay. I've well. had, I've had <laughs> my friend like, John me. on, John Hill, and then you. So yeah. Jonah Hill? I no, love John Jonah Hill. Hill. <laughs> not Jonah Hill. No. No, but it's just Jonah Hill. I just want to, I mean, spring is here officially. Yeah. And we are celebrating it today by wearing um, fashion. Um, well, there, it's prairie wear. It's which, prairie wear. Right. We're giving you organ trail realness. We're <laughs> yeah. giving you died of scurvy. Leave us behind. <laughs> Tell our story. Broken axle. Broken axle. Got a snake bite. Um, and 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 you were like, should I get outfits for us to wear? And I said, yeah, it's yeah. Easter. Why not? Well, yeah, the, so that's what happened. I, Justin and I ran into one another at a show. Oh. Is that, I've, can we not say that? Yeah. <laughs> we ran into each other's show. Yeah. An outside event. And, um, and that's when we were like the podcast or whatever. And then it was right before Easter. Mm-hmm. I was like, should we wear Easter bonnets? And I said, yes. Hmm. 1000%. Right. Of course. Um, and I have to say, I definitely look like the spinster sister like i'm yeah i'm giving like like just the dowry is dry like this uh, olga hmm? she makes sauerkraut in her german village um and you you are clearly like the bell of the ball like i don't think so i, I think th- i'm new to the village i think like i was a transplant or something oh and so, <gasps> hence red an escaped past <laughs> yeah. the hester prin of cottage wear Yes, yes. You have to wear like the scarlet red. She showed and- ankle during Sunday, <laughs> yes, Sunday's yes. church service. Mm-hmm. So they banished her from the village. <laughs> yes. She's got to start over again. Is she yeah. educated? We don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah. Can she read? Your guess is as good but as she mine. Can lay down. <laughs> so I am so excited to have you here. Um, we did run t- into each other last week. We were at the drag, the musical we were. at the Bourbon Room. Mm hmm. Which I did not know you were going to be there. You probably didn't know I was going to be there. I didn't know you were going to be in the show. Mama, she was in the show. <laughs> Justin was in the show. <laughs> I know. I was like, what? And Yeah, because we went, my wife, Jen, was shooting, the, was photo, photographing the show. And she's like, guess who's here? I was like, who? She's like, Justin Martindale. I was like, oh, fun. Because I thought you would be with your boy. And, like, and, and there she was across the room in her full sequence coat. Yes. <laughs> With her, with like your my binder just (laughs) sitting there. It was so crowded. I know it was crazy. Did you like the show? Oh my god, it is! I love it so much. It's so. I think it's going to Broadway. Yeah, I think it's going to off Off Broadway. Broadway. Yeah, okay, but it's going to sell out. So if you were in New York City and Drag the Musical comes to your town, watch it. It's Mm -hmm. phenomenal. The, The talent, the story, the colors, the costumes, the wigs. I mean, it is good. It is so much fun. And yes, I had a cameo appearance. You did. As, <laughs> you did. As the, uh, the lawyer to the estate at the very end. And I, you know, I end up bringing good news to everyone. And uh, I was really nervous. Well, it was really, I know you were, it was really cute, but it was, so there was like a, a, a you know, this prop door that mm-hmm. swings open. And, and then, everyone's like, <gasps> Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. Justin walks out and his well his sequence came first and then he came after. Mm-hmm. That's with true. His, <laughs> with his binder. Mhm. And I what was the name of your character? I don't remember uh Liberty Vandersnatch. Liberty that's- Liberty Vandersnatch. Of course it was. And when they asked me they were like we want you to like pop up as like a guest cameo in the show. I was like Oh my God, am I going to be in drag? Because I don't want that for anyone, you oh, know? I think you'd be really beautiful. But... I think I'd look like a brick. <laughs> I mean, look at me now. Honey, you cannot contour. There's not enough yes. contour in the world. <laughs> yes. I don't know. Maybe I would. You could. I just feel like I'm a lot of jaw. Like, <laughs> And I'm 6'4". Like, in, 
heels. But the main character, and I'm please forgive me. It's she's a, she's a huge drag artist. Like, yes, the it's not Alaska, is it? Alaska, Alaska's in. The, yeah, one of the leads. There was Nick in Alaska. I think. Yeah, Nick is the, the really buff yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, ripped. Buff. And then Alaska. Alaska. Yeah. Equ is it just just Alaska or is there more to it? Well, Alaska Thunderfuck 3000. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I knew I was a uh, gay mm -hmm. fail on my part. I my know. Bad, my bad. But I mean, that wig and the heel. I mean, but Alaska's also really skinny. And I'm just like, you know, a moose <laughs> linebacker, <laughs> quarterback, cheerleader. So, Dot, they have tape. Listen, you could do it if you wanted to do it because she was equally as tall. You just. Yeah. They have corsets. There's a lot of. Tucking, padding. Yeah. You could do this. I would look like a can of biscuits <laughs> in the car in the summertime. Just <laughs> not a off can the of sides. biscuits. <laughs> um, yeah, it was really, really fun though. So you came out in mm -hmm. this part and it was like your character was revealed, you were revealed as a person. Cause what I think they bring on a star like every different show. Was yeah. that right? And that's I think how they so. brought you on? Mm hmm Like a cameo? Give us a cameo. Did they just ask you last minute? Not last minute. <laughs> <laughs> they asked me what dates I was available. And I said, Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be at the Thursday show. I don't want to do this two show a night thing. No. Oh, that's right. Who did the two shows a I night? Did the, I don't know. I think Monet did one. I think, I don't remember who else did the other ones. But it was fun because your wife was taking pictures of the of the the cast. <laughs> and they all came out so good. But it was so bizarre because I got there at call time. Mm -hmm. I am a poignant king. <laughs> I am on time. Tardiness drives me insane. And when I'm late, I'm like, oh. Um, As I come in five minutes late for this podcast. No, but you, but okay. you texted. You were like, I'm going to be five <laughs> minutes late. I'm like, noted. Okay, good. But I was watching because I had to sit in the audience while I'm watching the show. Yeah. And I didn't know. And I, I get there at seven to run through everything. There was no time to run through anything because they were so late and loading in the crowd and like, they were behind, and I mean, obviously, drag queens, they take forever to get ready. <laughs> so I'm just sitting there, and I'm watching everyone eat food, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh. I don't know if I'm supposed to see this. <laughs> I, I, don't think, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to see drag queens eating, eating. Oh, ever. No. Like, we want to see them eat on stage, yeah. not actually consuming food. Ew, ew, gross. So I'm like, hey, everyone, and they're like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, God, no, I've seen too much. <laughs> and I didn't run through blocking or anything. <laughs> So then I'm watching this show and Chris Coffer and his and his boyfriend Will are in front of us. Yeah. And I'm just watching the show and they're like, Justin, Justin, <laughs> Justin. And I'm like, <laughs> and I looked down, they're like, come on, it's your time to go. And I'm like, oh shit. So I went back there and then I'm standing backstage and now I'm in the <laughs> the costume change of it all. And I'm just yeah. leaning up against the walls, just like picking a safe word, holding my breath. And they're all just like, Drop and trow and change yeah. it. And I'm like, ah! yeah, yeah. And But it was so, so much fun. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was so glad that you could be here today. But I do want to say with this bonnet, you know what it's giving me? What? <laughs> it's reminding me of the time that I was in the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> and I would just go down the street and I'd run up and down the street. <laughs> and I was just a little girl just trying to fit in, you know. <laughs> have you seen that? No, but they have. Everybody who laughed at I, oh. I was like, I'm supposed to know this reference. Oh, okay. it's just, you know, it's just hard being a girl. When I was 16, I was in trouble all the time. And I would just do cartwheels down the street in the dark. And J-Lo oh, is getting dragged I've... on TikTok because, once again, she's letting us know that she's from the Bronx. I Once again, well, I heard J-Lo was in a lot of, people were coming down hard on J-Lo. Yeah. As of like, be because of, is it the P. Diddy stuff or that she was associated or the, is there something else that I'm missing in the pop culture world? No, I think it's just because, well, she was like engaged to him. Mm -hmm. Wasn't she? I think she was. But um, no, it's just, this video came out where she, she released <laughs> her movie that was terrible and then she released like the making of the mm -hmm. movie that's terrible. And she was like, I'm just a little girl. <laughs> and every like all these people started coming for her because they're like, bitch, you went to private school. You the didn't run nowhere. in the Bronx, <laughs> yeah. down the street. You were popular. Cut it out. But she's still, it's just, the, it's, she just runs with it, you know? 
I didn't know that about J Lo. I did. Well, it's kind of like I don't want to put this out there, but it's like Jack Harlow. Yeah, who's from Louisville, Kentucky. <gasps> Where I'm from. Yes. And he's like super like, you know, he's always ha. putting himself. Ah, ah, just like two that. milkmaids going. Ah. Ah. <laughs> yeah. He grew up in the Highlands, which is a really. <laughs> he grew up rural ranch. <laughs> he grew up. The Highlands is a pretty well to do area. <gasps> the only thing that I will say that puts him in like relatively close to that ah, uh-huh. is that he went to a public school called Atherton, which is like. Ah. But he still grew up pretty affluent. Do you know what I mean? Like right. my brother insures his parents' small business. Do you he know wasn't what I'm like living on on the wrong side he of was, the tracks. He wasn't downtown. Dude. God, <laughs> like we are. No, I know. I'm the, no shade, but I'm just saying it's very parallel to no, them. Like you know, I you totally did okay. love those stories when people get called out. They're like, they're actually like <laughs> they had a good childhood. <laughs> And they're like, man, life's hard. It was so hard. I don't, I'm like, you where'd even... you get that accent? Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Why are you talking like that? Stop it. Everything was so hard, you know? We what? had like... <laughs> it was so we grew up, Yeah, we grew up poor. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. so like, it was just tough, you know, because I was like, you know, trying on the streets, you know, trying to get like some, you know, some money for like bread. You're wearing food, you know what I'm saying? What are you... For, like EBT was hard, you know? And you're like, mm, you're... Dad's a lawyer, <laughs> so I don't know. Your family's <laughs> still together, right? Yeah, you're from the country. Uh, well, speaking of country, tell me everything. Uh, Beyonce <laughs> has released Act Two of the Renaissance Era. It is called <laughs> Cowboy Carter. Uh, she has uh, exchanged the crystallized diamond horse for a actual real horse. She's giving you Rodeo Queen Chic. It came out, uh, I believe, over the weekend. It's already been streamed like 70 million times. It was like the number one album on Spotify, which is expected. Right. Um, have you listened to it yet? I've listened to, not all of it. Okay. But I've listened to Jolene, Blackbird. Uh, um, the one, I'm sorry, the most popular one. Please help me. Texas Hold'em? Yes, thank yeah. you. That one. Mm-hmm. But and I've listened to thread throughs of the other one, but just the highlights. I've it's, just listened to the highlights. It's like an hour and something minutes long. But can I say some yes. of some of the songs weren't country. Right. Am I I mean, am I cra- like I was listening to it and I was like, that's not country. Yeah. Which is fun, but mm-hmm. like it's I don't know if it's supposed to be like one big country album. Well, it's when I was listening to it, I felt like there were excerpts of like classic. Americana yep. songs. For instance, you know, she did Blackbird, which is the Beatles, right. which I loved. I loved, loved that it. one. Loved it. it. I liked it. her version of it. Uh, in the beginning, I can't remember the uh, the the first song of the album. There's, um, um, I'm really good at like, like hearing songs and being mm-hmm. like, oh, that sounds like, or or like mashing up songs and mm-hmm. be like, oh, that would go good with this. Mm-hmm. It was that song, the... Um, there's something happening here. What it is? In that exactly. one. Stop, oh, children. Yeah. Cl- yeah. So American Requiem is at the beginning of the uh, album, um, and then she samples like the Beach Boys. She samples in um, the song Yeah Yeah, which I really like. She samples um, Nancy Sinatra. These boots are made for walking. <gasps> So it's like a little bit of like a classic, okay, Americana. But yes, country. I get it. The Miley song. You done? It's the song. Yeah. It's so good. That's called Two Most Wanted. And I never would have imagined Beyonce and Miley Cyrus like meshing so well together. But I didn't they do well, there's like one degree of separation. Dolly Parton is her godmother. Is Miley Cyrus's godmother. Yeah. And I thought and Beyonce and Dolly, have they worked together before? I feel like they all just kind of, you know, they've been circulating each other's well, Beyonce and Miley did the Stand Up to Cancer benefit. Do you remember that? No. How In long ago early, was that? It was like the early 2000s, and it was like Leona Lewis, Mary J. Blige, Mariah Carey, Miley Cyrus, Natasha Bedingfield, and they were all, there was more. There was like so many artists, Carrie Underwood, but they were all like doing this gigantic song to Stand Up to Cancer, and Beyonce and Miley, Beyonce had her like um, Cadillac Records, like blonde short wig mm-hmm, on, mm-hmm. at a James era, <laughs> and they were like standing next to each other and like rubbing each other's 
first back while they were singing. <laughs> Why do I know that? <laughs> it was a precursor to this album. No, Jesus. I love the, but I do love, because um, you know the original Jolene by Dolly Parton. Mm -hmm. It's like a soft, like, like, listen, like, you're really pretty, so maybe if you just don't come around my man and stuff, and just please, just, if you could just, like, I know, I'm sorry to yeah. even ask you this and stuff, and, like, yeah. just Jolene, please. <laughs> yeah. Like, I feel like you're Jolene, and I'm the girl being like, hey, this is my one ticket out of this town. Yeah, she's <laughs> and like. And you just, like, not wear red and a bonnet, you know? I, yeah. <laughs> I just really want to have a special day. <laughs> and you ruin it, Jolene. Yeah, this is, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah this is like my one shot. <laughs> just my one shot. No one talks to me. It's this. I sleep in the cellar. <laughs> but no, I He's totally... still related to you, but you just don't want to let him go. Yeah. Did you, no, I... Did you... So, yes, I, that, Jolene is a classic <laughs> for sure. But then, but then uh, Dolly has like a little bit of a... a pop up in the beginning before Jolene where she's like, hey, B, it's Dolly P. <laughs> and I heard you talking about that Hester Jolene with the good hair. I'll be looking at her. You know, it's like, all right, Dolly. But then, <laughs> but then Beyonce goes into it. Goes and she's, in, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> the song starts it's like, Jolene, yeah. Jolene, Jolene, Jolene. I'm going to break your <laughs> face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Try me, bitch. bitch. It's like no, your mom's it's a lawyer. So you know? good. It's really good. It's She's like, bitch, touch my man. I swear to God, we'll blow your whole fucking house up. You're I like, know. Oh my God, Jolene. <laughs> run, Jolene. Run, Jolene. Run. 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 <laughs> yeah, totally. I'm like, well, I would not want to be Jolene. I know. Ah, oh. The 2020 version of Jolene. Bitch, we got guns now. Is like it went from like I'm. Um, Enough, you don't take my man. Please. To, I'm warning you, bitch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Try me. I got yeah. a sister, and this elevator door is closed. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. so insane. I loved it. <laughs> um, and I just feel like it's really good. But it's funny because the memes are kind of like going out of control. It's so good. I love the memes. I'm living for them. Memes right are great where people are like, so you're telling Jolene to not come for your man? Have you seen the man? Yeah. That's a picture of JC. And it's like, oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> You're like, mm, oh. The internet is so it's cruel, so crazy. but so good. I, I, my favorite songs are, uh, so far, I need to listen to it again. I listened to it a lot over the weekend. But, yes, I do love Jolene. Oh, another thing is that there's some some tea. Give it. <laughs> Spell it. There is some tea. On the song, let me find it. I think it's on the song Bodyguard. Mm -hmm. If you look at the writers on the song uh -huh. Bodyguard, it says TBD. What does that even mean? I mean, I want to be determined, but why? Why? What's because the tea? Because apparently Taylor Swift oh. is in the background vocals of it, which everyone kind of thought they were going to do, uh -huh. but it hasn't been confirmed yet. But I think the rumors are is that Taylor was kind of like, let let's have Beyonce have her moment. Oh, let's not have people being like Taylor, <laughs> Taylor! you know, just spittle and blood coming out of their eyes Taylor and ears. And yeah. let let uh, her have her moment. Um, oh, this is breaking news. No, Taylor Swift does not <gasps> sing background on Beyonce's Cowboy Carter. Okay, like so they're that. saying that it was her. Now it's saying that it's not her, but that does not mean that she did not write the song. Because it does say TBD on the album. And her and Beyonce both have history, obviously, with Kanye coming up on stage and taking the award. And then Beyonce coming back and saying, Taylor, have your moment. Mm -hmm. And then also over the past summer, they did each other's uh, movie carpets, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> eras and renaissance, the film. So it would not surprise me if in a couple of months or so, they're like, Taylor Swift wrote the song. But did is that where did the rumor start that she was even on the background vocals? I think it just kind of came out before the when people started speculating like the collaborators and yeah. stuff because everyone all the gays were like we're gonna get telephone two and they were like no we're not guys <laughs> guys stop trying to make telephone two happen it's not going 
to happen. Telephone 2 is the new fetch. <clears throat> it's just not going to happen. Wasn't the original telephone with Lady Gaga and Beyonce? Lady Gaga and Beyonce. Uh, they thought I Lady do. Gaga was going to be, because Lady Gaga did the Joanne album. Okay. And she was in like a cowboy hat. But now Cowboy Chic is just really uh, blowing up. Megan Thee Stallion just came out like with a whole like um, uh, a cowboy aesthetic, like with the chaps and the hat mm -hmm. and the thing. I was like, it's, it is happening. It's going to be cowboy country with a K summer. Do we love it or do we not like it? I mean, we're kind of doing it now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're like before it's time. Like this, this, the prairie look is coming. I know. Right up afterwards. It really, <laughs> I mean, it's here, but also Orville Peck is releasing his country album, uh, I believe this week I, with Willie Nelson. It's and what? it's gay themed. Stop. I know. I think Will. I was thinking about this at lunch today. I was That's like, really... I think Willie Nelson's just kind of like, I did it. He doesn't care anymore. He loves everyone. He's high all the time. Yeah. Just let him. He's on Beyonce's album. Doing what? Talking. I can't. Yeah. I really can't. Willie Nelson's just here. What is he's he supporting saying? everybody. Oh, God. I love him for it, though. <laughs> no, I hope he's. I Because there was something that his son just released that his. I don't know if it's maybe it was like a spam thing, whatever. But his son said he wasn't feeling well. Like he wasn't he he's ninety hundred years old. I know. And I don't know if that's true, but that's what I read. But can you can you guys type in Orville Peck Willie Nelson? O R V I L L E. Cause Orville Peck just released it today that he has a new album coming. Oh, oh, that guy. Yeah. Oh, he, there it is. Uh, or, oh, no, no, no. Up, 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 up. Orville Peck, it's, the song is called Cowboys Are Frequently Secret. Wait, Cowboys Are Frequently Secretly Fond of Each Other on the uh, album. That's, wait, that's the name of the, that's that's just the headline? Or is I that think name, that's the, the name, name of, of the, the song. song. Yeah, let's see. I don't know much about Orville Peck, but I do, I, I know. Orville Peck is kind of this I mean, he's like a gay cowboy star. But why, yeah, the mask. But why the mask? I mean, I saw him perform at like one of the. Yeah, Grammys, I love his voice. Right, so oh. sexy and deep. How is the country music scene taking him? I honestly don't. I mean, know. I feel like he's Lil Nas X of country. Where's Nas X? Lil Nas X had that country song. We're gonna go downtown on that open <laughs> road. That <laughs> one. Yeah, I know. Get that out of my head. And yeah. Um. Yeah. So the song, the the uh, April first. Orville Peck announced his first release on the label, a collaboration with Willie Nelson. The pair will duet on a cover of Cowboys Are Frequently Secretly Fond of Each Other. Whew. A song originally released in 81 by Latin country artist Ned Sublet and covered by Nelson in 2006. Peck himself previously performed a rendition for Sirius XM at the 2023 Hollywood Bowl show. So yeah, I'm here for it. Love it. No, I, yeah, no, I love it. do just... Willie and Orville make out on stage? <laughs> Does Willie Nelson I actually kind of turn Orville's Willie? <laughs> <laughs> Willie's never been associated with any partner. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think like he's collabed. Ever, no, intimately. Like I don't. Oh, I don't know of him. Him ever being. He has a granddaughter. I know. Have you met the granddaughter? Raylan? Why would I have met the granddaughter? She's like she's been around comedy for a while. She's a big comedy fan. Rayland. R who? Ray <laughs> Raylan? Is, is that it, what you said? I think her name's Raylan. Oh, Raylan God, Nelson? I can't remember her name. But she's not a comedian. She just likes No, she comedy. loves comedy. Yeah, she's friends with like Josh Wolf and stuff. I actually oh, okay. have Josh Wolf. I mean, I'm here for it. Like, uh <laughs> No, I, listen, I totally, I'm not, I need to get more into country. The last time I checked on country, it was Garth Brooks. Oh, okay. Well. Are you right. a 90s queen, 90s country queen? I know. Me too. I mean, it's, I know. I don't like this like Florida <laughs> <laughs> what is it called? Florida Georgia line and like I just like uh, country when I again like this is it's just because it was my time. Like that's the only reason. Like Strawberry it's Strawberry Wine, Deanna Carter. My brother was a big fan of Garth Brooks and he had like the four checkered, like uh, you know what I mean? The the, the black and the color. blue. Yeah. Uh, with the cowboy boots, there was snake skin and there was a waterbed involved. Not with my but do you know what I mean? Not got with it. my brother, but <clears throat> was he reenacting the Thunder Rolls on yes. the waterbed? <laughs> yes. Is that what it was? And the Thunder Rolls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. so good. With the baby mic. 
<laughs> I mean, 90s country just took it to a whole other level. You could talk about everything. Like, uh, uh, what was it? Um, oh, God, hold on. Um, abuse and domestic Independence abuse? Day? <laughs> Remember that one? No! What was her name? Um, oh, my God. Martina, Martina McBride. McBride? Oh, Martina <laughs> McBride. I'm sorry. I forgot your name. My God. It's this bonnet's too tight. <laughs> Um, Martina McBride, she's singing yes. about like her dad beating her mom, and then the mom's like, go off to the parade, and then sets the house on fire, <laughs> leaving this poor kid an orphan. <laughs> I know. I mean, God. I, wasn't the Thunder Rolls about domestic violence? She like... smells the perfume on her neck, <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> and the Thunder Rolls, go, 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 and the go. Drop, pom, so pom, good, pom. yeah. Because even in the video, it was storming, and when they were like, hitting each, like he there was, was hitting a slow her. tear. I mean, country just hit differently. No <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> but now, country, I'm like, I love. I mean, I'm obsessed with Casey Musgraves. Okay, love Casey Musgraves. Her new yeah. album, uh, Deeper Well, is so good. I actually kind of like it better than Beyonce's album. I literally did not see this whole podcast coming in this country railroad that is coming through the station. Did someone I say railroad? No I did. <laughs> Well, no, we'll move on. We can move on. Yeah, yeah. But I can talk country. No, it's great. No, okay. I, like I said, it's because of Beyonce. And by the way, I think, honestly, Beyonce could run for president if she wanted to. Yeah. I'm not sure what the pause is, but if she wanted to, she could. Like, that's how much, I mean, it's insane. Mm -hmm. Now, the globally, country music is doing what country music has been doing for years. But yeah. now that Beyonce is like, I put out a country album. And everyone's like, oh. Everybody just went and bought to Boot Barn. Yeah, and seriously. Bought them out. Beyonce could be president. Yes. Uh, her sister could be Secretary of Defense. <laughs> <laughs> and then Michelle and Kelly uh, for the cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> Done. This. That's it, right mm -hmm. there. Um, <laughs> speaking of cabinets, um, uh, <laughs> Tori Spelling. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Tori Spelling came out and said that her daughter was shamed for living in an RV because classmates thought she was homeless. Now, oh, over the weekend, Tori Spelling said that she is officially separating from her, I guess, ex-husband, Dean. Mm -hmm. um, and there were rumors last year that she was living in an RV. She has now come forward and said, we never lived in an RV amid her money troubles, claiming the only rented uh, the motorhome for, quote, Summer vacation. I feel like if you and I were on the Oregon Trail together, we would be like, we don't live in this. <laughs> we, <laughs> we don't live in this wagon. We're just renting it yeah. <laughs> for, for summer vacation. <laughs> We're just, we're traveling west for the yeah. summer. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was more travel friendly. And you can flap up the flaps yeah. for air. And mm -hmm. it's just more woodsy. Yeah, and when we have our feminine issues, we can do them comfortably in our petticoats <laughs> with sea moss. <laughs> we just uh, squat and use tree bark for pads. Mm. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's what God would want this Easter. You know what I mean? But <laughs> she just premiered her new <laughs> podcast because, welcome, yeah. called Misspelling. I can't. Yeah, me neither. Right. Uh, she said that she shared a story about her 15-year-old daughter, 15-year-old daughter, I said 15-year-old dollar. <laughs> she wishes. 15-year-old daughter Stella's classmates thought her family was homeless after they were photographed in the RV on multiple occasions last year. My daughter is like, people already talk about us at school. They know you and they know the family and they read the press, she recalled. Um, you know what? It's a family vacation. Like, if... if did your family ever do like motorhome stuff and RVs? No, but we never had an RV or a motorhome situation. I mean, because here's the thing: those things. Have you seen how much a motorhome or RV situation is? I mean, they're it's like hundreds gigantic, of thousands of this, dollars. I mean, look at this. This is like <laughs> that's a tour bus. That's a tour bus. She's like, people think we're homeless, mom. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry. I thought the spellings were going on tour. That is like seeing a helicopter 
and being like, oh, their car must have broken down. Poor things. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Oh, my God. They're carless. Ew. Ew, gross. Ew. <laughs> they were in a private helicopter. Ew. Yuck. Uber X. They're poor. Ew. Yeah, seriously. She's in a bathrobe with her coffee mug. Yeah, what a homeless deviant. <laughs> Those are... Um, before renting the mobile home, they were living in rental homes and motels. Now, I remember that. And then they were taken out of the um, hotels and motels and went straight to RV. She had someone come up to her at school and ask, are you in the school district or where does your RV park? Because you live in an RV with your mom, right? Ooh, what a bitch. Ew, what a, sh like, the Shannon Doherty of 90210. The new bullying. Oh. oh, my God. Your RV's parked in the... Gross. gross. Are you just here to dump your porta potty <laughs> <laughs> on site of school? You're just going to here to release your sewage into the ocean? <laughs> into the ocean. <laughs> How much money do you have to, to, to make or to have to pull a bully on a $100,000 RV parked? Yeah. In your, is it their private school? I would imagine. I'm sure it is. And she's like, she's one of five kids. Tori Spelling has five kids. <laughs> I know. Gross, mom. People think we're homeless. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, here they are at like the, the, the Beverly Hills Hotel. Um, Those so, are all her kids? She has that many kids? She has that many kids, yeah. Do you know why they got a divorce? They were married for 18 years. Mm -hmm. Do you know why they got a divorce? I figure if anyone would know, you would know. I think know. it was like, I think it was like, what is it? Irreconcilable differences. Yeah, they're over it. Yeah. Okay. And um, and those are all they're all those are all their kids together. Yeah. With these those two. Yeah. No, that's yeah, that's all their kids together. Oh my god. Yeah. So they have a whole little brood of. How is she so tiny? Spelling errors, huh? How is she so small? She's had seven kids. Because <sighs> they're poor, so. Yeah. Yeah. Must not be easy. They have to ration their food oh, no. on the RV. I know. <laughs> I know. Well, uh, here's someone who's having a wonderful time on the internet. Oh Did God. you know about it's this? Secret. What? Britney Spears changed her name. I didn't know that. Your best friend, Britney. Tell yeah. me everything. She changed her name to Zelia mm -hmm. um, in a weird and bizarre Instagram post. I wish I had weird and bizarre Instagram posts, but I don't. I just post the occasional, like, selfie. Yeah. But Britney Spears always starts with bizarre and unusual Instagram posts. Yes. She changed her name to Zila. Oh. Uh, XX, the X is silent, and Zila. <laughs> Would X it just be Ela? No. Zila, <laughs> like Zilaphone. X-I-L-A. Okay. So she has changed her name... Um, to Zila, and now since she's changed her name, uh, she has bizarrely claimed that she's having trouble understanding her native language. <laughs> <laughs> and here is a quote. Here's a quote. What is happening? Since I changed my name to Zila, I actually am having a hard time understanding English. She wrote, she wrote. in English. In English. So she can't understand it, but she sure can, she can write, write it. it. <laughs> While Spears' Instagram handle remains at Britney Spears, the name on her account reads Zila Maria River Red. She added Zila in front of her Instagram moniker in February with no explanation. I didn't even notice. I've given up. <laughs> I honestly have. I know. How is she going to continue to talk if she doesn't understand English? Maybe it's for the best. No, no, it's because she's not talking anyway. Yeah. There's a lot of, there's still a lot of beach movement and twirls and flips and hair. I mean, you don't have to talk nor write, but still. Here's what I think she should do. She needs to get a camera crew, oh. go to the beach, and do Beach Body by Brittany. <laughs> that would... B, 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 B. Mm -hmm. Or not B, 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 X. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Beach Body by Brittany. <laughs> And just have her spinning around in the sand, you know, California girl, living her life. Do you think she's ever going to turn the comments back on on her on her posts? Did she turn the comments back? No, she has not. And I'm, yeah. I'm wondering if she will ever turn no, the comments back on. No, I don't on. think I'm... so. But you know what? I feel like if she did, people still would be like, queen! <laughs> yeah. Queen! Yeah. Dance around like that yeah. crazy yogurt stop employee. <laughs> yes, mama! Do you, girl? Do no, you? You do you. Slaying. Slaying. Slaying, mama. And I'm like, 
Am I in the multiverse? Yeah. <laughs> God. You know what, though? You have to give up them for 100% commitment to complete insanity. Kind of like what we're doing today. <laughs> That's what I mean. Who are we to judge? I Who say are we, to <laughs> we support you. <laughs> we can't sit on top of our high horse or our wagons well, and look down on people because, my God, my God, Justin. I know. You absolutely are right. <laughs> so don't get your aprons in a bundle. Mm-mm. Not this spring. And praise be. Yeah. You know, well, here's under some, his eye. I never thought in a million years that I would say that this person should be giving Britney Spears advice on how to get back out into the world. And that uh, is Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Who is coming? You, <laughs> America's Rose. favorite possum has <laughs> recently... <laughs> has called it quits with her hubby after like three or four months of getting out of prison. Were they married while they were, the entire time Mm -hmm. she was, oh, But then this is the tricky part of the headline. Okay. Moves in with her parents. (laughs) (laughs) Parent. (laughs) Mom. Mom. I don't want to have another spoonful of mercury, Mom. So. <laughs> so. Where's <laughs> she the dad? <laughs> I'm going to go watch Cinderella in the movie theater and get Wild Dog on the floor. Remember that? Patricia Arquette never saw that coming. Oh my God. Gypsy Rose Blanchard and Ryan Scott Anderson are reportedly done so. Gypsy posted a private Facebook message detailing her split from Ryan after nearly two years of marriage, according to People. So, um, uh, a rep for Lifetime tells TMZ that Gypsy Rose Blanchard has openly shared her life with Lifetime and our cameras from the moment she was paroled. Her story, including her relationship with Ryan, will continue to unfold on Gypsy Rose, Life After Lockup, debuting this <laughs> June on Lifetime. <laughs> oh, no. I know, I know. In December, Gypsy was, relief, was released from Missouri's Chillicothe sure, Correctional Center after serving seven years conspiring to kill her mom, Dee Dee. In her post, Gypsy wrote that she's unfortunately separating from her husband and currently living in her parents' home. So I guess she moved back to Louisiana. <sighs> um, is she living in the house that, that she killed her mom in? That's what I was it's not her parents' home. So I would imagine it's like the house that her mom is. Oh, that that she sounds was healthy in. for your mental <laughs> stability, doesn't it? There's no, there's no, they didn't demolish that house after her mom. Her dad? Her, dad? her Yeah, her biological dad. Yeah. Well, that's good. I think the dad was like the normal one. He was the one like trying to help her and stuff. So she says she's receiving support from her family and friends to help her through this rough patch. She went on to talk about following her heart and needing to find herself. You know what? So yeah, they sparked up a relationship while she was in prison. They tied the knot in a jailhouse ceremony. <laughs> no, they in didn't. July of twenty two. Did they meet because via pen pals? Like he just wrote probably. her in. Stop. Yeah. How did she pick him out of all the people that probably wrote her in jail that were probably... Well... Do you have the... Spill it. Have you put the side-by-side of her husband and her mom next to each other? (laughs) No. Google it. But you have... A little bit of like a weird kind of trauma bond kind of thing. But here's what I'm upset about. She got out of prison. Immediately, what do you do when you get out of prison? Uh, you shower, go shopping, eat good Close food. Close post on Instagram. Okay. Yes. And you get on Instagram, you get like all the- Like me being normal. Yeah. My bad. Like you get on Instagram, you talk about how your husband's D is fire. Okay. Yeah. She's like, oh, he brings me the D. And then in the comments, he would write in, come over here, baby. Stop like with um, an eggplant emoji and like a, yes. like a water squirt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. You know, the classic. Again, I'm not psychic, but these are just things I'm picking up on. <laughs> Taylor's all the time. <laughs> like that's going to be a, cop, a couple's costume this year. I'm sure for Halloween. I'm the eggplant emoji. And I'm squirt. Um, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm squirt. I'm squirt. <laughs> um, but yeah, she went on to Instagram being like, oh yeah, he gives it to me good. People were uncomfortable. I'm um, uncomfortable. And you're, yeah. This is fourth party 
Possums are nocturnal for a reason, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, and so then she gets on Instagram and she's like, get ready with me. So she's catching up because Instagram was invented when she was in prison. So she has oh a lot to catch up on. Yeah, so ready. she's just out trending herself and like, got to do, and people are kind of getting annoyed and like, okay, uh. she did all the talk show mm -hmm. circuit. I think she's just coming to terms with reality. She has since quit the internet, which I'm like. Oh yeah, she did. She so that's what I'm everything. saying. Maybe she could be like, Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> That's a podcast I would watch. Right? Gypsy Rose and Zila. And Zila, Red River, Run Down Maria. But <laughs> Zila, Run Down Maria, Red Rover. Red Rover. Would never talk. <laughs> Send my career back over. <laughs> but it'd have to be Gypsy Rose the entire time carrying the podcast. Yeah. Because Zila, <laughs> Red Rover, Xylophone, literally. Would say, I would watch it at heart. I would watch it in a heartbeat. She Just to... Britney Spears with a xylophone named Zila. And this ding, ding, ding. I mean, she I'd would... rather watch that she than would... her being like, <laughs> <laughs> like, what is this? Stop it. God. Uh, speaking... no. <laughs> Sorry, please. God. Speaking of quitting, Lizzo <gasps> says she has quit the music industry after lies against her. Now, I don't know if this was an early April Fool's joke. Mm. Um, a lot of people are just kind of like, <laughs> what? Because wouldn't you just be like, I mean, when you're getting all these people making allegations and accusations against you, like, mm. you don't go, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You just it's say... Not, I didn't do that. You're like a lot of people were just, you'd be like, hey, I know there's a lot going on right now and I feel sorry for people who, you know, I support the victims or whatever, but let's try to meet in the middle somewhere and get the story told correctly. Mm -hmm. She just straight up was just like, I'm getting tired of putting up with this, with being dragged by everyone in my life and on the internet. Um, <laughs> I'm starting to feel like the world doesn't want me in it. Oh, well, that's sad. That was dark. It was dark. That was really dark. That one was like, the, when she said that line, I was like, all right. Yeah. All right. She Someone go it. to her house, check <laughs> yeah. on her. Wellness check. Wellness check Wellness on Lizzo, check. aisle four. Yeah, I... <laughs> But I, I saw that and um, I was, but it wasn't just the allegations from her dancers or her crew. Like, well, I think it's like it was everybody. Just, yeah. Everyone's she, making fun of her weight and. Yeah. You know. But, okay. Which, I mean, there, she has a little bit of a point. She just wants to make music quit. and not make people happy. I don't think she's going to quit. No, she's not going to quit. Um, but this post did come. Uh, a day after a lawyer representing her former dancers criticized the decision to choose the pop star to headline a fundraising ev event amid accusations made against her last year. The dancers' allegations included sexual harassment and creating a hostile work environment, which Lizzo has denied. Now, I had a podcast like a couple, uh, I want to say when all this stuff kind of popped up mm -hmm. and we were talking about it and there was like, the dancers were saying that they went to this show in Amsterdam and she was like making them do stuff on a banana and stuff. But then we found out that the show is like that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, it's kind of like an audience participation kind of a show. And it's like a sexual adult theme show, obviously. But also I'm like, if you didn't want to go, don't. Yeah. But the allegations were saying that she kind of forced them and they didn't want to like piss her off to like, you know, potentially lose their jobs or something. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like they need to like just have a lunch. They didn't, but did it did they ever find out did they have to suck the banana? Like something was like there that. something really like but was it choreographed into their dancing or was it just everybody's stretching? And she's like, suck that banana. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I think it was but like do that. You know what I mean? was it like part of the I show? I think it was like she you know, definitely went. They were, they were at a sex club. Right? It was a sex club, but it was like oh. a lewd. I think it was tech, like a lewd sex burlesque show. Okay. So, you know. So it was off hours. Yes. If you will. It was on Tori Spelling's tour bus. I agree. Yeah. Um, she says, "All I want is to make music and make people happy and help the world be a little better than I than how I found it." But I'm starting to feel like the world doesn't want me in it. Uh, she says she has to constantly go up against lies and about uh, people 
using her image and music for clout and views. She added she felt she was the butt of the joke every single time because of how she looks and that her character was being picked apart by people who don't know her. You know what? Take a break. <laughs> There's nothing wrong. Or make a country album. She could. She could. She About, definitely could. I she think could. She's already got. She's super talented. She plays the the, the flute. flute. Yeah. And she's mega talented. Uh huh. Just I think, redirect. You know what? And also give people like a couple years to forget about all of this. Couple years, couple weeks. People couple are weeks. done. Fair. Like that's what I mean. They've moved on they have to moved the barge. On. They've moved on to there's to a Tori lot, Spelling to living Tori in an RV. He's poor now. Yeah. <laughs> there's bigger fish to fry. You know. <laughs> My friends say I live in a bus, mom. God, what a nightmare. <laughs> I'm Team Tori on this one. I'm sorry. I'm Team Tori since 90210. Uh, well, yeah, the world is on fire as we know it, which is why we have to get out of here quick. And we're just, you and I are going to get in a shuttle. A we're going to go to space. Yeah, a shuttle. Sweetie, we are on a carriage ride. We're on a carriage. <laughs> we're going to get on we're a going hot really wagon slow. wheel ride. Yeah, it's going to take us literally two years to get from LA to Nevada. Yeah. <laughs> So. Two years. <laughs> what could go wrong? We've packed enough canned beans to get us through this long, arduous summer. God. Well, this woman, this traveler, um, is... <laughs> she passed away. And they were... A woman and her pet cat had their ashes blasted off into space. This woman, Elizabeth Garcia, and her husband, John, spent a lot of their time traveling around the world but never got the chance to visit space. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if space wasn't on your My travel itinerary. Bucket list is thrashed. I've been to Rome. I've been to France. I've been to Austria. But you know what? Never been to space. Thanks, honey. I thought you loved me. Yeah. But can't, you don't. Can't get on a cruise ship to space now, can we? <laughs> but you know what? Elizabeth's hmm. fate has changed until now. Oh. She was born in St. Albans, and she had a heart condition that estimated she had two years left to live. And less than two months after her 70th birthday, she passed away. R.I.P. They enjoyed traveling and socializing, her sister said. She was a very generous person, helping family and friends. Her wish was for her ashes to be sent into space. So, <laughs> so Elizabeth did her research. She discovered a company called Aura Flights. <laughs> what, happened? what happened just being buried under a tree? Exactly. Or like being named after a star. Sure. Turned into a rock. A diamond, a crystal? No, she says it's extra special doing the launch for someone you've spoken with so much. So this woman kept calling. This woman kept calling this. But NASA? No, Aura, whatever the hell it is. Knowing how much she wanted to be scattered in space and being able to fulfill that for her really was a rewarding and heartwarming feeling. <laughs> like a vacuum cleaner being dumped out. Is that what that is? That's her. That's Elizabeth. She says her ashes were out of this world, traveling over at 100,000 feet above Earth in a scatter vessel lifted by a special stratospheric balloon. She arranged to have her final wish come true, posthumously having her ashes scattered into space with her cats. Shut up! Her cats are mingled in there? Yeah. Her cats were scattered Scattered. <laughs> so in January, Elizabeth's ashes were scattered across space with her pussy, and it was all captured on camera for friends and family to witness. It was emotional, but special, knowing this was exactly what she wanted. And that space company hung up the phone and said, thank God this bitch is dead, so she can't call us anymore. She would have been, oh wait, she would have been elated by the outcome, as were we all. Aura flights. Elizabeth Garcia. Te amo in space. Por vida. No! Yeah. I refuse this story. But what it, <laughs> no. 
<laughs> I mean, we're about to have like an eclipse this week. What if it, what if it's just Elizabeth Garcia? Is her face what if we up? just look up and we're like, are those meteors? And they're like, oh, it's that it's bitch Elizabeth. Elizabeth. <laughs> just like, just entering the atmosphere again. But you know what I will do? Uh, I will record it in slow motion while it's entering the atmosphere <laughs> and put Como La Flor to the song in the back. Oh, hey, hey, uh, hey. <laughs> Como me duele. 29 years ago. R.I.P. Uh, Selena, forever. I cannot. <laughs> Oh, my. Is this the first person that's ever had their ashes up in space? I mean, probably. But now Elon Musk is like, don't make this a thing, guys. <laughs> he did. Don't make it a thing. He voiced in on this. I, I don't think he has. You can't just have a bunch of people's ashes up there in space because eventually we're on our move to the moon to live. Throw us on the moon. <laughs> Isn't the moon made out of ashes anyways? We have an ashy moon. You know what I mean? There's <laughs> dust up there in rocks. Put her up there. What Could you imagine horrible. if that canister of Cat and Elizabeth mm. just landed on the moon, and the next time we go <laughs> to the moon, we're like looking at the flag with Neil Armstrong and everything. We're like, what, the what is that? Oh, that's Elizabeth Garcia. <laughs> She's that bitch. <laughs> What's with her about? It's all sideways. <laughs> what is this? One of those peanut brittle things with snakes in it? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Kids in your mouth. I hate it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know what I do love? I, I love Did you watch it. Housewives Sorry. of Beverly Hills? Not recently. I know. Uh, I've had so many fails on this show, but go for it. Sutton released her friend Merce, and they went to Barcelona, and she was like, I have his ashes in my purse. Mm -hmm. And she threw them out, and they all went back <laughs> into, like, Garcelle's mouth. <laughs> That's that. Yes. <laughs> That's my Roman Empire. Like <laughs> when ashes fly back just, and hit yeah, somebody in the face. Her covered in just ashes, and she's like, son of a bitch. Yeah. Mm. I love bone fragment. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's turn this around, God, okay. shall we? Oh my you God. You love hedgehogs. I do. Oh, the pump. Yeah. Did sorry. you see this? A baby hedgehog was rescued by a quote, well meaning woman. Turns out to be a pom pom. <laughs> What, they, what is it beside it? They feed it? Are they yeah, feeding they it? it? Yeah, they put food out. For they put it. food out for it. I think it's peanut brittle from <laughs> Elizabeth peanut Garcia's. I was gonna say or urn. cat food or from cat Elizabeth food. Garcia's leftover cat food that never got it. Never got it. A wildlife hospital just solved a hilarious case of mistaken identity. A woman brought in a baby hedgehog to the Lower Moss <laughs> Na <laughs> Nature Reserve and Wildlife Hospital in Cheshire, England, only to be told it wasn't an animal in need, but a beanie hat palm. Pom. Pop pop. They know no grammar in People magazine. There are commas missing. Pop pom. No. The caring woman had picked up the hedgehog from the side of the road <laughs> after she noticed it hadn't moved or pooped all night. How do you know? Oh God, this hedgehog won't poop. I've got a constipated hedgehog at home in a box. I can't go out tonight. I gotta stay with the hedgehog. <laughs> Did she notice it has no face? Like there's no face. There's check. no tail. You guys, there's no feet. I would love to go to happy hour, <laughs> but I found a hedgehog on the side of the road and it's not pooping and I'm worried. It has not come out of its hedgehogness. <laughs> but I get it. She's just trying. She's just. <laughs> She she didn't handle it at all. She scooped it in a box with some cat food and left it alone in a warm, dark, dark place. So this is the veterinarian saying she was on the shift at the time. She did everything so well. She barely peeked at it because she didn't want to stress it out. <laughs> I just she, <laughs> she just she's driving down the street. Holy shit! A hedgehog. Let's pull over, but I don't want to stress it out. But oh. I will pull the wheel right up to right it. it. Get a box that I have in. I got one of my Payless BOGO boxes, and I just <laughs> scooped it up, throw some cat food in there, and let's hope it poops. It never moved once. It never moved once. I guess it was sleeping. <laughs> 
But see, this is why I always love those videos of people being like, I found a baby bird mm. outside of my window. Mm. It had been abandoned by its mother. And then they like feed it and they're like nursing it. And then it dies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, I did everything. I did it. I'm like, no, but it was sick. That's why the mother kicked get it out, out of the, the nest. nest. Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. There's nothing you can do. I'm going to just like, does, why are people so obsessed with like, like, like nursing, like creation back into, like, they just want to like release a dove yeah. and just see it. But like a hedgehog, what's that going to do? Yeah. Well, and usually the baby birds that you find are like, you know, like little baby, ch- you know, they're no skin, no nothing. They have yeah. no eyes yet. But granted, I'm all about like saving nature. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I'm just like, I feel like some people do it for like, look what I'm doing, you guys. <laughs> I found this like bird and now I'm going to help it and uh, save nature with me. It's yeah. the new get ready with me. Yeah. You know, they want to like, and now I, I poked the box. Yeah. Um, I put cat food out there. Um, it's not pooping. <laughs> um, I put cat food out for but, a bird. Oh my God. So she says that, was, I want to know what happened. So she had well-meaning intentions. She said she knew that when she was presented with the box containing the hedgehog, what it actually was. She says, it was pretty obvious that it wasn't a fucking hedgehog, but I can also see how she was mistaken. She said, you're joking. Oh my goodness, how did I do that? She was so concentrated on doing the right thing. She was concerned it hadn't moved or even pooped. She really wants this hedgehog to poop. Yeah, to poo. Really bad. No one wants a constipated hedgehog. I think she was constipated. That sounds uncomfortable. Yeah. (laughs) I I mean, just just give it some prune juice and a little, like, a (laughs) a little teat. She says uh, that would be spooky if it had pooped. Yeah. <laughs> okay. oh. So this woman was committed to a home down. and then um, put down. I wonder if it was like earmuffs if she thought she found two hedgehogs. Oh, my God. She's like, I've got two friends. I think they were siblings. And both of them didn't poop. And, I'm, and I checked. I think it was a stillbirth with twins. Oh. <laughs> We have a remake in the midst. Um, potential Freaky Friday 2 plot details reveal Lindsay Lohan, Jamie Lee Curtis, body swap with two teenage girls. Maybe not end that with two teenage girls. Anna has a 14-year-old tomboy daughter, Harper, who doesn't like her mom's British restaurant tour lover. Uh, you know Lindsay Lohan was like... We're going to make him a British restaurant tour lover. As the lead and star of the hit Netflix show, Irish Wish, right now, streaming. I, Lindsay Lohan. Yeah. She looks good, though. She's back. She looks good. She looks so good. Ten years sober. I know. Living in Dubai, like, giving. Wait, she lives in Dubai? She's been in Dubai, yeah. Why does she live in Dubai? Look at her. See, look at her. Yeah. Glowing. Fresh. Glowing. She looks so good. Um, so, yes, she did confirm that they are doing a Freaky Friday 2 reboot. It sounds like it's going to be a Freaky Friday slash parent trap kind of a thing. Um, so some of the details for Disney's highly anticipated sequel um, involve adult version of Lindsay Lohan's character, Anna Coleman, uh, her daughter might be a bit of a fun sucker herself as she and her mother, Tess, Jamie Lee Curtis, switch lives, not with each other this time, but with two teenage girls. Days after news broke that late-night director Nisha Ganatra would reunite Curtis and Lohan for the follow-up, the filmmaker shared to her Instagram story an open casting call to fill the new role of Anna's 14-year-old daughter, Harper. The call shared over the weekend described Harper as a tomboy with a sharp sense of humor who is in a bit of a mood these days because her longtime single mom is set to marry British restaurateur Eric Davis. According to the description, Eric also has a 14-year-old daughter, Lily, who does not see eye to eye with Harper, even as their families are about to join together via marriage. Um, They say that, uh, let's see, Air Entertainment Weekly viewed the audition sides, including eight script pages sent to prospective stars, which state, quote, this is a body swap scene, and that Harper should channel Anna, Lindsay Lohan, and Lily should channel Tess, Jamie Lee Curtis. So, it sounds like the two girls are going into Lindsay Lohan and Jamie Lee Curtis. Right. 
Right. The two teenage girls, if I'm correct, this mm-hmm. is very confusing to me who wasn't a big. That's why I'm saying it's like parent trap, freaky Friday. But the two teenage girls are, are going to embody those, those Jamie two. Lee Curtis and Lindsay Lohan. Yeah. So does, and it's to like stop some kind of marriage or something. It is very parent trappy. I don't like it. That's a lot. It's very it's layered. I think cuz is it one of those things that you can walk into a movie if you haven't if you have no if you haven't seen Dune 1, can you go see Dune 2? Yeah, you could just got it. Yeah. But is it one of those that you have to watch all the pre I mean, I really don't think you have to like start out with it. the Freaky Friday to get the Freaky Friday 2 experience. <laughs> yeah. The thing that they're going to do is they're going to put the two teenage girls in Lindsay and Jamie Lee and they're going to do a gross, we're old. <laughs> So it's a horror film. Mm-hmm. And then Lindsay and Jamie are going to be like, fuck yeah, we're Gen Z. Let's go make some TikToks and call everyone Chuggy and cancel everything cool. I'm stuck on the fag Oh, I said F word. You can. Oh, I've said it a couple Gross. times. Yeah. That's a really good movie to me. I would watch that. See, just I think that, that part. I don't care about the other part, but I just want to watch two teenage girls embody over 30 year olds. And they're like, ew, sick. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> did you know you didn't? Because I didn't tell you this. Over the weekend, I went to High Tops in West Hollywood. Uh-huh. Um, uh, Evan had a friend of his, our friend Blake, came in from Miami, mm-hmm. and we went out to dinner. Then afterwards, we went to High Tops. By the way, speaking of butter churning, yeah, restaurants in LA, we need lighting. Why? Wow, it's too dark. Too dark. One candle. <laughs> One candle lighting the whole place. Yeah. So dark. Um, and go to High Tops afterwards, where they're playing Lindsay Lohan's Rumors. Oh. I'm starting from a started. And... This guy goes, who is this singing? And I heard this other guy go, oh, that's Lindsay Lohan. He says, she's making music now? (laughs) How old was he? I immediately, telepathically shut all the doors with my mind, Mm -hmm. lit a match, and walked away. (laughs) Burned him. Burned him (laughs) alive. I was like, no! Oh, but it was great. God. Everybody with their menus was running up to him to get light on what they wanted to order. Like, could you just stand still? <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> I want to know if I get the truffle fries or. <laughs> God, no. J- just to no, because if you go to these restaurants, I know it's too dark, and then you're old because then you use your flashlight on your phone. Yeah. No, I know. It's either that or you, like I said, if they have a candle, which most of my candlelight, you hold up the candle, and so you're like this. Yeah. None of it You're is like, a Papa, good experience. No one wins. <laughs> no one wins. Papa, is he coming home this winter? Is the war almost over? Yeah. It's so dark. So dark. Just like the, people were bringing like lamps, like like Amazon lamps? lamps, like LED lamps and putting them on the table. I'm like, for what? Now that's too bright and you're ruining the ambiance. It's like a little baby concert where everybody has their lights up. God. <laughs> everybody light up your phones. Yes, yeah, seriously. It was just so much. But I guess I we're don't just... think anybody wants to see each other anymore. I think all everybody's like, we stop with this HD. I literally can't filter my face in person. But when your phone's brightness is brighter than the ambiance in the restaurant, that's a problem. <laughs> I'm on board. Yeah. But as somebody who also, but I also like it. Like Can when you it's, put your, um, uh, that's is it too revealing? revealing and I will <laughs> I accuse you of being a witch. <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, but I just want you to be able Red to River. monetize this <laughs> without sexual content. <laughs> it's just us getting older. Well, th- yes, I'm on board with that. Yeah. But that's what I mean. I also hate a really lit place. Like if we went to, if you and I went to brunch or dinner, and this was the lighting, I'd be oh. like, we're not coming here. No, 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 no. We're going to go. I walk by at night. I'll take my dog out. Yeah. And like, I see that people have fluorescent lighting in their homes. Um, and I'm like, how do you live here? <laughs> what happened? Oh, I know. Well, go live on an RV. I know. You know what I mean? Because you're poor. You don't get the, why are you in like a million dollar home with fluorescent lighting? You yeah. psychopath. Oh. <laughs> Don't get me started. I I love that. I've heard about electricity. <laughs> What's that, Mima? I don't know, but I think one day it'll catch on. <laughs> Probably not. I can't wait to make choices with our own bodies. Ew. <laughs> Thinking. Yuck. 
<laughs> yuck, yuck. Women's History Month. I'm in. Oh, it's <laughs> over? I just got a note from my producer. It's over. Okay. Um, speaking of old, here's 10 things I hate about you, cast. Um, where are they now? 10 things I hate about you is celebrating their 25th anniversary. One of my favorite movies. Um debuted this week in 1999 and people are still talking about it um and this is just it's us weekly sometimes we just don't need to like have these stories but i loved 10 things i hate about you because i was a very young thespian mm -hmm. and i loved a remake of a classic movie 10 things i hate about you was um taming of the shrew by william shakespeare and i feel like in the 90s like we loved a good classical piece of literature turned into a movie. Emma was clueless. Um uh uh she's all that was Pygmalion. That's a good one. Are you serious about all this? Yeah. I love that you know that I never knew any of that. Cruel of Intentions was dangerous liaisons. <gasps> yeah. Did you know that at the time or did you just know that afterwards, like in hindsight? I just knew I just read a lot of like books in school and I was in a lot of plays but I just forget how how theatrically educated you are because you were an, you, you were an actor first right mm -hmm. before you did comedy mm -hmm. but I do want to say like what some of them are up to Julia Stiles clearly having a career um she is still doing movies all that I also forgot who was in that movie did you see 10 things I hate about you I feel like if I say no, this is going to come to a screeching halt and I'm going to ruin your podcast. But no. I have to be honest. No. You haven't seen it. Oh, my God. I saw Clueless, though. It's okay. Ugh. It's okay. But Julia Stiles was in it. Gabrielle Union was in it. Allison Janney was in it. I totally forgot I Allison Janney. I love Allison Janney. Janney. Allison Janney and Paul Royale right now. <clears throat> so good. If you haven't seen Paul Royale on Apple Plus, watch it. It's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Kristen Wiig, Ricky Martin, Carol Burnett. Hello. Mm -hmm. So good. But it's also... Us Weekly saying, 25 years later, what are the actors actors up to now? Well, Heath Ledger's dad. Oh, no. R.I.P. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was uh, uh, 25 years later. Congrats. Yep. Also. <gasps> Who? Which one? All of us. Who? Yeah. <laughs> God, where does the time go? Just tighten your bonnet and it does it really quickly. That's why I love it. Just put it right underneath your neck. Oh, yeah. You need surgery. I think I'm just going to wear this for the rest That's of the day. That's all I'm saying. Um, speaking of um, where does the time go, Abby and Brittany Hensel, do you remember them? <laughs> what? Abby and Brittany Hensel. Every time I look left to the screen, there's either dead bodies that are partialized mm -hmm. that are in space mm -hmm. um, or there's conjoined twins yes. that I have never seen And these in my conjoined life. twins are everything right now because they goofed us all. They shared <gasps> on, yes, yeah, they were on. I like the Millie Vanilli. They were on a show on TLC. I feel like, what was it? My Conjoined Life or something or Stuck Together With You or Two heads are better than one. What was mm -hmm. the TL? I feel like that would be like a TLC show. <laughs> Not two heads are better than one. I don't know. I, you know, no. TLC is like my 600 pound <laughs> sister. They keep it basic. You know. It's exactly what you're going to see. You're going to yeah. get it. Yeah. It's like going to a small town and going to a grocery. It's called grocery. Grocery. You, wanna, you want some videos? Go to the video store. Yeah. You need bait and tackle? <laughs> bait and tackle. Yeah. That's what you're going to get. Looks like, Abby and Brittany. Yeah, it looks like it was just called Abby and Brittany. See? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> that's what they got. I was trying to be a little more clever. Two heads are better. <laughs> I'm not getting over that for the rest of the day. I'm done. You're welcome. <laughs> so, so they share a TikTok account. Shocking. Yeah, they <laughs> and they appear to respond to the online attention they have received and to call out haters after it was publicly revealed earlier this week that Abby married a United States Army veteran, Josh Bowling, in 2021. The internet is extra loud today, Abby and Brittany wrote alongside one clip showing a series of photos of historical sculptures of conjoined twins as the song Real Love Baby by Father John Misty played over the top. Their caption continued, we have always been around. Hashtag Abby and Brittany Hensel. Hashtag happy. Hashtag love. Hashtag love story. Hashtag marriage. 
How about hashtag conjoined twins? <laughs> hashtag shoes. Hashtag hangers. Hashtag broom set. Hashtag, hashtag oh. <laughs> hashtag didn't see you there. Um, it's a second video captioned hashtag forever. The pair were seen embracing Abby's husband bowling in a photo as a voiceover said, this is all for you haters out there. If you don't like what I do, but watch everything I'm doing, you're still a fan. Although neither of their posts <laughs> referenced any specific, <laughs> any specific social media comments. The twins TikTok videos came after attention they received this week over news of Abby's relationship with bowling. <laughs> with whom she lied, <laughs> with whom she tied the knot in 2021 in Abby. <laughs> I can't with the fucking Vespa. <laughs> in, Abby, in Abby and Brittany's Facebook profile photo, they are seen in what appears to be a wedding photo wearing a wedding dress and holding hands with Bowling, who sports a gray suit and stands opposite. They don't put that picture in, though. Um, Who is that? <laughs> so they were on... Yes, the world knew them in 1996 after they appeared on Oprah. Mm. And then, <laughs> I guess TLC gave them a show. And then she... They... Um, became teachers. And then I guess they met this uh, army guy. And which one did he marry? I mean, I guess he's getting a package, you know? <laughs> um, Not the Vespa. <laughs> no, 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 Abby. No. Right, of course. <laughs> I'm... <laughs> I think this is the photo they were talking about. Please stop. It looks like it looks, looks like the husband of Gypsy Rose. It's Gypsy Rose's <laughs> ex. <laughs> it also looks like one of those pictures for like like a ghost hunter where <laughs> yeah. they're like, here's our wedding picture. And like some person's in the middle, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, and you're like, oh, who was that? That was a dead butter yeah. churner from 1836. Yeah. So I want to, oh let's, let's guess what their first dance song was <laughs> at their wedding. Uh huh. Just the two of us. <laughs> I'm going to say, Put your heads on my shoulder. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, what about um, To Become One by the Spice Girls? I'm still going. Um, two of hearts. I love it. I love it. Stacey Q. Two of hearts. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would just want that for my first dance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I need you. I need you. <laughs> Um, Not in that dress. What about Heads Will Roll by the Yeah, Yeah, Yes? <laughs> <laughs> oh. um. Now, we're staying with the conjoined <laughs> twins of it all. So this conjoined twin, because I have questions. What do we do during some very intimate moments? So... This conjoined twin has explained what happens during his sister's intimate moments with her boyfriends. So, this is Lori and George <gasps> Chapel, who live separate lives despite being joined at the head. They're the oldest living conjoined twins in the world. Um, George, who was born Dory, transitioned and started living as a man by 2007, which made him and his sister the first same-sex conjoined twins to identify as different genders. I mean, LGBT, wait, hold on, LGBTQ plus I A C, C J T T conjoined hmm. twins. Can conjoin, conjoin trans, trans twins. twins. <laughs> Another it. Let it let it let it be known. If that's Thank if you. if these siblings are not the grand marshal of a float this year, <laughs> I will quit. petition. <laughs> and look at me. I look like I am ready to petition. <laughs> I'm voting this year. <laughs> 
So you have a torch. I got things to say. The twins <laughs> were born see. sharing 30% of their frontal lobe brain tissue and critical blood tissue. Despite being connected physically, the twins led separate lives and identify as individuals and have separate romantic experiences. Hmm. I want to know what these are. So Lori has had boyfriends in the past, and she and George found a way for her to date while George was occupied on other matters. So Lori says, I lost my virginity at the age of 23 to my second boyfriend. Okay. Okay. Because of where the 61-year-old twins are conjoined, George didn't have to see anything he didn't want to during his sister's intimate moments with her partners. She explained when I went on dates, George would bring along books Uh. to read. As we don't face each other, he could ignore any kissing. I don't see why being a conjoined twin should stop me having a love life and feeling like a woman. <clears throat> In 2006, Loris was engaged. However, four months before the couple were due to tie the knot, her fiancé was killed by a drunk driver. If this is not a country song, oh my God. I don't know what is. Oh, no. It was devastating and my heart is broken. Well, oh. Okay. I'm still in contact with his family and have only recently started dating again. Oh. Oh my gosh, it's tragic. <sighs> I don't mean to be gross or mean. But it's doggy style. It has to be. No, she's front though. She's what? She's front. Do it. But he's there. <laughs> no, I know. But where they're joined, George he's turned. is face. <laughs> Reading, so he's this way, reading a book, and then so they're she's laying this down, way. and she's missionary. You're saying yes, but she's also, on bottom. Are there sounds? <laughs> yes. No, I, I mean you've got to be like a good sibling. Oh, <laughs> this she also released a song. I must. There's a song. The song is called Fear of Being Alone. You know what it's giving? 90s country. No, <laughs> well, Shania Twain is yeah. what it's giving. Oh. <laughs> Why is she on a tripod? <laughs> That's how we got to the West, yeah, Sarah and I. <laughs> this is actually just me and Sarah. I was on a mule, though. You just took me on a mule. So this is the one getting railed. <laughs> yeah. I think the one... And the one holding her is walking George. Walking is George now, yeah. And she, do you see what I'm saying? He doesn't have to look at her at all. <laughs> So this is the hit single, Fear of Being Alone, by Reba Chappell McIntyre. Um, very supportive. <laughs> <laughs> why is that not bigger than it is? It really needs to blow up, guys. No, they're I'm going saying, through why a lot. is that not bigger than it is? I don't know how many views it had on it. It has 214,000 views. In this world today, you know what? We need a little uh, a snippet of... Oh, this is actually that was actually a cover of Reba McIntyre's song. Fear of being alone. See? Okay, I think 214,000. This actually was was released around uh, 10, 12 years ago. God, when YouTube, like, it, this was fresh when YouTube came out, right? Yeah, around? they really got in yeah, on they it. Got they in. were like, oh, <laughs> yeah. you know what this internet needs? Us. Nashville stars. It's catchy. It's catchy. It works. I love it. I agree. I agree. I just want to wheel you around on a um, a, a painter's <laughs> easel. Now that I've seen that, I feel really far away from you. So going from conjoined twins to DJs, um, this DJ claims that she was removed from a Delta plane like a criminal for not wearing a bra. Um, oh. DJ Tits Out, uh, who... <laughs> it's 
not her name. Um, an Australian DJ flying from Salt Lake to San Francisco on Delta claims she was humiliated by a gate agent who escorted her off the plane before taking off over her outfit. Uh, Lisa Archbold first complained to the airline on social media, claiming on X that she was extracted from a Delta flight for not wearing a bra. She says she was told by the agent that the official policy of the airline is that women must cover up. Uh, don't we know it? <laughs> yeah. I think I'm showing you can my here. <laughs> um, during a press conference on Thursday, the attorney, Gloria Allred, oh, love Gloria Allred, said she had sent a letter to the president of Delta on behalf of Archbold, her client demanding more accountability for what they see as unlawful, discriminatory conduct. Allred claimed that on the day of the incident, her client was wearing a, quote, loose white t-shirt, buttoned up business shirt, and cheetah print jacket, but took off the two outer layers because it was uncomfortably warm. Her all red, though, one could fairly and faintly see the shape of her breasts and her nipples through the T-shirt. Archbold's breasts and or nipples were covered by the T-shirt. So the attorney then claimed a female gate agent treated her with hostility while inquiring about a seat upgrade seemingly without reason. After boarding the plane, Allred said that nobody aboard, passengers or flight attendants alike, complained to her client about her outfit. Shortly before takeoff, however, the same gate agent allegedly announced, I need to speak with you in private before escorting Archbold off the plane. Um, the agent then says the reason she needed to speak with her in private was that her outfit was too revealing and offensive. And this poor DJ is just trying to get to her gig. She says she was targeted and humiliated. She felt like she was escorted off the plane as though she was a criminal. I am on this woman's side. I don't, do you know how many people or girls I see on a daily basis? Or what? Around, just walk around on a daily basis with no bra straight up thin yeah it's like it's what's happening right now i get on instagram and it's just like no underwear yeah no bras like also there are way more offensive things than a woman just wearing a t-shirt on a plane do you think more went down though of why she got escorted like do you like there was something that happened that got her escorted off look at her okay well What do you think? Do you think there's more? I'm gonna I'm gonna assume yeah. um that there was something more that went down. Yeah. I'm always on a, a woman's side. That's sure. not what I'm saying. Sure. I'm saying, but there's I you they takes it takes something to get kicked it off a plane. It does, and as a Delta passenger, <laughs> I love Delta. Mm-hmm. Um, I do kind of agree with you on this because what have we been seeing on social media a lot on planes? Drunk people. Yeah, and duct tape. And they're and going the to tape. ruin it for all of us because they're all getting tased and taped and fighting and opening up emergency exits and sucking out everybody on the plane Yeah, because they just can't mix their pills and alcohol correctly. <laughs> Did you see the one that uh, went viral? It was, like, it was a gay couple and they were- Shelby and Dolly? Yes. Oh yeah, Shelby Did and Dolly. Did you already do a whole podcast on this one? Oh my God, it was my favorite. And the lady in the wheelchair is like, <laughs> like, bitch, shut the fuck up. It was my favorite thing in the world. My friend John Hill made a song about it. I was wondering, I was like, I hope somebody makes a remix he out did. of this thing. John Hill made a song. Did it blow up? About, uh, yeah. Oh, it's my all God. Over. But I honestly agree. I think she's flying from Salt Lake to Australia, and that is a long-ass flight. Yeah. She's um, but also, this is what bothers me more. Not a nipple or breast under a white linen shirt. Oh, no. A hoof on the TV screen. From someone in front of me with their full shoe off, foot, Pringles, toenails, just like filing the dead skin <laughs> off of their hooves. Um, a, a mucousy child banging the back of my seat. I love it. Um, someone eating bratwurst and sauerkraut next to me. <laughs> or fish. Which kind of feels like at home at this point. <laughs> But there's so many other things that I find offensive about people than like, 
And also, you're sitting down. No one's paying attention. No one's yeah, like, no one cares. what is she wearing? <laughs> yeah. What are they yeah, wearing yeah, today? Yeah, yeah. Unless you're like Adam Ray on a plane. Adam Ray's just taking pictures so of people good. and like just like he's the only person looking at people on planes today. Yeah. I am zoned out. I want to get in my seat. I want to just shush. <laughs> the only time you can talk to me is if I'm sitting on your seatbelt. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? They're like, sir, can Sometimes you? And I'm like, mm, okay. <laughs> After that, dead to me. Don't know you. Don't try to talk to me. Earbuds in. Mm -hmm. Movies going. Mm -hmm. I'll pretend that I'm asleep. Yeah. Because I can't sleep on planes. But I'll just be like, <laughs> you know. But no, no, no. I, I, I am here for this DJ. I support DJ Delta. No, I listen. I'm with her. I just, like I said, I've been on enough planes. And I've sat in the back by the bathroom. Mm. With the last seat where it doesn't even fold back. Oh. And by the way, I would never fold it back anyway. Because, you know, when you sit in a seat, you can put it back an inch. Just. Uh -huh. Oh, on the last row. Yeah. No, I've done no. That. Just like just when you're in your seat, regular seats, you can push the button and it'll go an inch to a, a, an, a little an incline back. Right. Which I don't choose to do. Yeah. Because I'm like, that's shitty. Because yeah. people do that to me and I don't like it. Do you know what I'm talking about? Absolutely. Right. Because yeah. there's already like three inches of room in You're anyway. not like reclining. I'm not, rec I'm not reclining. Right. Um, I did. You just made me remember. I remember sitting in the very last seat mm. once. And the guy next to me was dipping. Oh. <laughs> into a cup? Like full blown? Full blown. Full blown. Into a cup, but trying to hide it. And I almost vomited on the plane <laughs> to the point, And this was like a big, like, big dude, mm -hmm. very like giving January 6th. And <laughs> like, so, of course, I don't want to be like, you know, normally I'd be like, really? When I and I looked at him, I was like, are you serious? Mm -hmm. And he just looked at me and goes. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So How? let this DJ have her kangaroos out. Got it. And fly in peace. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. We're, Women's History Month may be over, but for me, it will go all year. Yeah. So can we play The Fear of Being Alone to close this out? Thank you so much. Sarah Hyland. <laughs> Where can everyone find you? Please tell us your <laughs> dates, what is going on, where where can people follow you? Oh, my God. Justin Martindale, thank you so much for having Please, me. Please, anytime. This was so much fun. <laughs> thank you for our, our amazing costumes. I had to borrow them from the Oregon Trail, so I have to give them back afterwards. Yeah. And I'm glad they didn't get dusty because um, yeah. I have to hand wash them and then put them on a line. Oh, so. in the river. Well, oh, what a good yeah. creek, though. The same one I menstruated in. So that's going to oh, be Oh, good. Yucky. Well, uh, luckily, we had a lot of rain this season. <laughs> yeah. So the, it'll be good. It'll be good. The, the tides are high, <laughs> oh, yeah. you know. Uh, um, I I could keep going, but I'm not. So, yeah. um, yes, you can go to uh, on Instagram, Sarah Highland Rosenstein. Um, you can follow my podcast, Not Cool, which actually Justin has been on twice. Really fun. Yeah, so fun. And I'll be in San Diego a ton at the end of April. I'm doing uh, uh, West Con the Milwaukee Wisconsin Pride Festival. Oh, yeah, that'll be really fun. That's but it's not until June seventh. Um, but that'll be really fun too. So, oh, uh. and the like, Saturday night main stage situation so we'll have oh, a good time good. you have yeah. to go to trixie's bar while you're out there she has a bar out there in in wisconsin yeah, yeah. oh fun yeah. you guys are good friends right yeah cute yeah we are but so go check it out check her out follow her and we will see you next time here on the just saying podcast please make sure to rate review like tell all your friends about it we love this podcast and we hope you guys too have an amazing week and we will catch you next time bye bye